Hello dear students today we are going to shoot for Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak's very famous uh, article called Can't you suppose to speak So Spivak says that she is going to wind up this essay using a conversation between two intellectual giants that is Michel Foucault and Gilles Deleuze So she says that I have chosen this friendly exchange the friendly exchange between Foucault and Deleuze uh, because they are two activist philosophers because it unders the opposition the conflict the tension between authority authoritative uh theoretical production and uh, the uh, unguarded practice of conversation because theoretical production is always uh, authoritative it is platonic it is socratic see i am the great man teaching you but a conversation is more light hearted and genuine and more democratic okay uh, so this enables one to glimpse the track of ideology from foucault to delus and delus to foucault the, the trajectory of ideas can clearly be traced in the case of a conversation whereas in the case of a theoretical production it's more authoritative you cannot you cannot controvert or dispute a theoretical discussion or debate or presentation uh, like someone like say uh, noam chomsky who's a great man goes without saying the participants in the conversation emphasize the most important contributions of french post structuralist theory first that the networks of power desire interest are so heterogeneous that the reduction to a coherent narrative is counterproductive a persistent critique is needed and uh, so this is an ongoing it's like a perpetual revolution there is a perpetual critique between the networks of power desire and interest so these are all uh, overlapping uh, concepts so which comes into play later in bruno latour's idea of actor network theory So secondly the intellectuals must attempt to disclose and know the discourse of society's other is very old hat the concept of the other with a capital o lacanian term the big other yet uh, systematically ignore the question of ideology and their own implications in intellectual and economic history so gatris work as a feminist is a, uh, attacking uh, these two giants of uh, european continental philosophy these two great french philosophers because they bring their masculine ideology patriarchal ideology into the debate although one of its chief presuppositions is the critique of the sovereign subject the conversation between foucault and delus is framed by two monolithic and anonymous subjects in revolution a maoist and the worker struggle intellectuals however are named and differentiated moreover a chinese maoism is no more operative maoism here simply creates an aura of narrative specificity which would be a harmless rhetorical banality were it not that the innocent appropriation of the proper name maoism for the eccentric uh, phenomenon of french intellectual maoism and subsequent new philosophy systematically renders asia transparent so uh, spivak is taking the battle to the Uh, French continental philosophers, the great philosophers, Gilles Deleuze and uh, Michel Foucault, because what she is claiming is that they actually don't understand Maoism. They are orientalistically trying to render uh, Maoism or China as transparent. This is not possible. This is Orientalism. Okay, this is Indian territory. So Spivak is a uh, chela or shisha or student of the great Edward Said. Uh, she calls him an emperor in her talk delivered in India Habitat Center, and uh, so. Um, compared to the imperial magisterial over of the Ed, great edward said uh, these two philosophers appear rather um, uh, reductive so delas's reference to the worker struggle is equally problematic it is obviously a genuflection it's a prostration it's a bowing down it's a humiliation of oneself we are unable to touch in any point of its application because uh, without finding ourselves confronted by this uh, diffuse mass so that we are necessarily led to the desire to blow it up completely every partial revolutionary attack or defense is linked in this way uh, to the worker struggle uh, so here i would like to draw your attention to the film uh, manasuna kare where the odwil unikrishan character is an old communist revolutionary comrade and he um, finds fault with the proletarian worker that he is not um, giving him reduction in his wages even though he had uh, underwent uh, unforeseen sufferings uh, for the cause of the proletariat so this is a conflict between the theoretical position about the proletariat and the proletariat themselves so the apparent banality signifies um, a disavowal there's a disavowal just like the odwil unikrishan character here delas also has a disavowal uh, this statement ignores the international division of labor a gesture that often marks post structural political theory the invo- so there is an international division of labor where china is the manufacturing hub of the world and india is the service hub of the world so who are the manufacturers the brahmins are the manufacturers so who are the service uh, industry providers the shudras so we are the service industry shudras and the chinese are the manufacturing brahmins this is the global division of labor this is the new caste system which is also a division of labor according to certain sociologists so uh, 
It is capable of dealing with global capitalism, the subject production of worker and unemployed with the nation state ideologies in its center. Uh, so today we have post-nationalism and other theories, but here the ideology, the Pratishastram of nation state is very much at the center. The increasing subtraction of the working class in the periphery from the realization of surplus value and thus from humanistic training in consumerism and the large-scale presence of para-capitalist labor as well as the heterogeneous structural status of agriculture in the periphery. So what about agriculture? What about those poor peasants? What about the um, Maoist peasantry? Why don't you consider the agriculturists, the farmers uh, who created recently the greatest protest movement the world has ever seen in India? Uh, so um, the point is that large-scale presence of para-capitalist labor uh, as well as the heterogeneous structural status of agriculture in the periphery, they are being ignored. The unorganized sector is majorly being ignored, ignoring the international division of labor, rendering Asia and also on occasion Africa transparent, unless the subject is ostensibly the third world. It's a very derogatory category. It's very surprising to find uh, two giants of European continental philosophy flippantly using a term like the third world, uh, re-establishing the legal subject of socialized capital. These are problems as common to much more structuralists as to structuralist theory. Why should such occlusions be sanctioned in precisely those intellectuals who are our best problems? Profits of heterogeneity and the other. So here, uh, the very prophets, she is using the term very ironically, are uh, using uh, these terms in a very reductive manner, in an orientalistic manner. So that uh, Gatri's work finds a problem with. Okay, thank you for joining. Goodbye.